Hey, what's up? Welcome back. In this episode, we're going to talk a little bit about polymorphic associations. And that's a super fancy word for saying we're going to make objects that can be related to lots of different kinds of objects instead of just one, like sort of a one to one relationship between class and another class. So in this episode, we're talking about how we can extend our like ability. So we have a, um, this, this application here, we have this blog app where we can like and unlike the blog post and uh, we're gonna sort of track the number of likes, but we wanna also be able to like a comment or like a reply to another comment, right? And so we wanna be able to extend the capabilities of a like to apply that to other objects in our system. Maybe we wanna be able to like a, a, a photo or we wanna also be able to like a comment and like a blog post. And so one way that you might do this is with polymorphic associations. And so let's talk about that for a second. And actually let's look at our, uh, our schema, our database schema right now. So right now we have this like model and inside of our table for a like, we have a re uh, relationship to the user who liked the object. And then we have a, a direct relationship to the ID of a post. Now this is a specific kind of thing that we could like, right? And in practice, what you might do is go, like if you, if you wanted to add a feature for liking a comment, one thing you might do is go create a separate table called like a comment likes, a comment likes table or something. And that would have relationship between a user ID and a comment. And then you might go create another table that's for images and it's called like an image likes and it has relationship between a user ID and an image. Well, if you, uh, you know, as your application starts to grow, if you have features around a like, so maybe you, a like is carrying some weight with it or you have some methods that are used to calculate different things about a like. Now you have to start to copy all of that logic across your like model, your comment like model and your image like model. And it makes it so that you're, you're really kind of complicating the system when in reality, the same action and same behavior and the same sort of like data that we're storing under the hood is really the relationship of a user ID and the thing that they're liking. Now, if we were to just store all of our likes for all the different objects in one database table, like maybe if we consider changing this, this column to like the thing that we liked, <laughs> uh, the thing that we liked ID, right? So maybe if we have uh, a post with ID 11 and the user liked that, we'll have you know the user's ID and 11 in the database. And we'll know that the user ID liked post 11. Now, if we have an image and its ID is 44, we might have the user ID again, and then the number 44. And if you're jumping ahead and you have the intuition, right, you might realize that it's possible that you have an image object whose ID is 44, and later you have a post object whose ID is also 44. And so in that case, you would run into a conflict where when you try to ask um, what this like is related to, you wouldn't be able to determine, determine is it liking the post or is it liking the image or is it liking the comment with that same ID, right? And so what we do is we're, we're gonna add another field to the database here. So it's gonna be another, uh, it's actually gonna be a string and it's gonna be called thing that we liked type. So we wanna track the type of the thing that we like. So this is gonna be a string value that's gonna be the class name for the thing we like. So it might be a post or it might be an image or it might be a comment, okay? So the thing that we liked it's, we need to track both the ID for the thing and the type of it. And by doing this, we know that uh, if we're storing the current user's ID and the ID of the post, so let's say it's 11, and the type as post, then we know that we can query the posts table where the post ID is 11, and we would get back this like for, uh, for that post. So this, this gives us the ability to uh, track multiple different objects that might have the same ID, but we know which type we're talking about here. So by adding these two fields here, we can create polymorphism. Now in practice, we don't actually, we don't actually call these thing that we liked uh, underscore ID or thing that we liked underscore type. Instead, uh, there's a convention that we're gonna call this likable type and likable ID, likable ID. Now you also might notice that down here under indexes, we have an index on the post ID. Uh, we have an index on the user ID and post ID being unique. Um, that was so that we could only like the post one time. We also have a, an index on the user ID. So we actually need to go in and change this index because if we start adding uh, IDs for, or if we like just change the name of post ID everywhere to likable ID, if you imagine like we, if we, we 
um, retain this same uniqueness constraint and index on this pair, then we're going to run into an issue because we won't be able to like uh, an object of a different type that has the same idea of something that we've already liked. <laughs> so for instance, if this was likable ID and we've already liked a post with ID nine, and then we went to try to like a comment with ID nine, it would fail because we actually need this to now be a, um, a thruple or like a three things with likable type and uh, likable ID here, or yeah, likable ID, exactly. And so we want to have the uniqueness constraint now on all three of those so that we can't re-like the same thing multiple times. Whatever, this is super long-winded to just sort of like set you up and prep you to think about what changes we're gonna make to the database here with the migration. So we're gonna say Rails G migration make likes polymorphic. And we'll talk about all the different Rails things that we need at the model layer, but I first wanna get the database Right. Okay, so let's jump in here to this migration. The first thing we want to do is rename that post ID column on the like on the likes table. So we're going to say rename column on the likes table from post ID to likable ID. That's going to be the very first change that we make. The next thing that we want to do is we want to remove the index on uh, likes where we had a pair of user ID to to post ID, but it's going to be renamed to likable, likable ID. So we're going to remove that index. We also now need to add a new column. So we're going to say add column to likes for the likable type, right? And this is going to be a string. We also want to now re-add a new uniqueness constraint index for the combination of all three of those. So we're going to say add index to likes for user ID, likable ID, and likable, likable type. And this is gonna be unique true. Now, one other thing that we might do a lot is look up, like count all the likes for all posts or count all the likes for all images or comments or something. So we also, let's also add an index for uh, likes for the combination of likable and likable type, likable, ID and likable type. And so, yeah, that should be helpful. We don't need that to be unique, but we do need to uh, probably have that in there for, for speed, for speed. Okay, so let's see if this works. So Rails DB migrate. Very cool. Okay, so we've got, we've got a bunch of changes that we made to our schema. Now let's go into that like object itself and make the changes that we need to here. So everywhere that we're talking about posts, that now needs to turn into likable, something about likable. So the very first thing that we have here is a validation that validates that the user ID is unique in the scope of the post ID, which is now going to be likable ID. And we also need to make this in scope of the likable type. So we can, we can make that pair here. So that it's like likable ID and likable type. Um, and then instead of belonging to a post here, we're going to say it belongs to a likable um, polymorphic true. So on the belongs to side of the association, this is the trick to getting this to work. So we have a belongs to likable, which is polymorphic true. That is, that is part of the trick to get this part working. Now on the other side of the association, anywhere that we were already using like, so in this case on the post object, we need to go over to the post model and here we're going to say has many likes. But instead of just saying like, uh, just leaving it as just likes, we now need to say as uh, likable so that it knows which association on the other side is coming back to this one and that it's polymorphic. I think that should give us something to play with here. So if we open up the Rails console, um, we should be able to say uh, like that last. I don't know. Let's see if this has, uh, so it has a likable ID. Let's actually do like dot update. No, like dot destroy all. We'll just remove all the likes from the database. And then um, let's do a uh, like dot create. So we're going to create a new like with um, p equals post dot last. And we'll say like dot create for likable is the post and user is you. And that created, okay, so here we go. We're saying like dot create and we're passing in the likable instead of passing in posts, now we need to say likable because now it's just like a generic thing that we can add a like to. And in this case, it happens to be a post object. And then we also need to pass in the user 
And here uh, down below, we'll see the actual like that came out and we can see the likable ID. And so if we look at the P's, P's ID is 11. So that we've got the ID correct. And now look at the likable type. That is like the string representation of the class that, uh, that is liked. So if we go to like.last, um, that's what we're gonna find. We can say like like.last.likable and that gives us back the post object. Let's also try to go like p.likes and that should give us back the like that we just created and that looks, that looks correct. Um, oh, let's also confirm that our validation is working. So we'll try to create another one with the same post and the same user and this should fail and it did and it rolled back and that's great. So let's actually go like.new uh, um, like dot new and we'll say l dot errors dot full messages and what l dot valid and then errors dot full messages user has already been taken again this error message whatever we can go fix it later sometime um, okay so I think we've got our database layer we've got our model layer let's move up to uh, the controller and uh, keep working our way towards the view so in the controller for the like controller here. Um, before we were using post in a bunch of places. We don't want to use post anymore. Now we want to use likable. What I'm going to do is actually just do a uh, find and replace for post. And I'm going to convert that to likable and that should uh, convert a bunch of stuff for us. But now we have to go through sort of with a fine tooth comb here. So um, we're going to create the, uh, the new like using like params, which right now we're just passing in the likable ID, but we also need the likable type in order to, to make that successful. Um, because think if you think about it, right? Like when we're receiving the post request to create the like, we don't actually have reference to the comment or the post or the whatever. We just have the ID it, that's like serialized. It's just that it's, it's going to be a string value for the integer ID that is, um, the object that we're trying to like, and we'll also need to pass in the type so that we can make sure that we're liking the post and not the comment when we pass in the number one or something. Um, okay, and then we can redirect to likable. That makes sense. We're gonna find the like and destroy it and we're gonna redirect back to the likable. Great, I think all this looks good. Let's go into the view now. So we're making our way all the way to the front end and we'll go to our post show view. And here we had a couple of forms and we also talked about button two and why my preference is to use a form like this. Um, so here we're gonna say that uh, we need to pass the likable. Uh, the likable ID and this in this case it is still going to be at post.id because that is the instance variable for the post object and that is the ID that we do indeed want to send as the likable ID but we need to add another hidden field that is the likable type and the value for the likable type is going to be post just like that okay and then our delete method should work exactly the same I think um, I don't know, we'll see. Uh, the other thing we need to change here is, I guess, okay, so uh, when we're looking up the like and we're saying current user.likes.findby, instead of post here, I think we need likable, right? Yeah, we need to pass in the likable so that we can look up the actual, um, the actual like object. All right, let's restart our server. All right, we've got an unlike button. We can unlike it and then we can like it again and we can unlike it. That looks so good. I am, I'm really pumped about that. Let's check too if we like it uh, from one user and we log out and we say wave and we log back in as another user and we go to slash, I think it was post 11. Yeah, so there's one like here already. If we like it again, now there's two likes. So that's all working totally as expected. And um, yeah, so that's how you set up polymorphic associations. That's how we migrated our like object to a polymorphic association. So again, we'll look at the schema and talk about all the different changes here real quick. So now we have that likable ID and we have a likable type instead of just having the posts ID. All right, so now we've got it set up. We've sort of uh, refactored to have this polymorphic association between posts and likes. Now let's try to apply this to comments. So let's see if we can just take our, uh, take our likable concept here and move it directly into comments. So let's do a little bit of refactoring here. What I think I wanna do is actually move this like button into a partial. So we'll go to our post show again, and let's grab all of this content about the likable liking and unliking, and we'll move this out into a, a new view inside of um, the likes controller. Uh, or sorry, the, the likes view. So we're gonna say uh, likes, and in here we're gonna add, um, I don't know, button.html.erb, and we'll grab all of this content for that button, 
and we'll paste it in here. Now, one thing that we're gonna need to change is instead of passing in at post or uh, you know the, this, the post specific type here, we're gonna need to receive those as arguments into this partial so that we can re-render the partial uh, as part of other types. So here we're gonna just, we'll just make this uh, likable. And then down here, we can make this uh, likable dot ID. And I think here we can do, um, whoops, uh, likable dot class dot two S. I think that should work. Okay, so now we need to pass in the likable when we are, um, when we're rendering this partial. So here we're gonna say render partial uh, likes button and locals is gonna be likable at post. Okay, so let's see if that continues to work as expected. Okay, undefined local variable or method likable. That should have worked. Oh, I didn't spell it right. Okay, so now we've got uh, unlike and we've got like and those are still working. Let's also move this likes count inside of the partial. So right above the button, we will just put in the, the, the count of the likes. So we're gonna say likable dot likes dot count. Um, and then we can remove that from there. All right, so now we've got this sort of self-contained button that has a counter right above it. And now what we wanna do is sort of apply this same control to each comment so we can track the likes on a comment. So it should be as simple as taking this partial and moving it into the comment, uh, to, into this comment partial. And maybe right after the content, we have this reply thing. And then maybe we also add a button to like and unlike just right after that. So let's just drop this down here and then refresh the page. And instead of passing the likable in as the post, we wanna pass it in as the comment. Okay, so we're gonna refresh. And uh, right now it's saying undefined method likes for comment. That's because we haven't set up the associations. So we can go into our comment model here and say this has many likes uh, as likable. Now if we refresh again, now we have zero likes and we see this like button and we can, or we should be able to like the, uh, we should be able to like the button. Let's see. Um, okay, so foreign key constraint likable ID is not present in table posts. So we've got a foreign key constraint between the likes table and the posts uh, table from an old association that we set up. So now if we go into our, um, to our schema here and take a look at our likes table, somewhere in here we still have a foreign key. Um, okay, so here we have a foreign key between the likes and the posts. So we actually need to remove this foreign key so that we don't, uh, so that we are not breaking referential integrity. So let's, let's do a remove foreign key in a migration. So Rails G migration, remove foreign key from likes to post. And I believe it should just be remove foreign key from likes to post. Maybe posts, let's see. For maybe, I don't know if I have to specify the column or not. Let's see, Ray, Rails DB migrate. Okay, and then let's refresh the page. Uh, oh, okay, so here we're trying to redirect back to the likable, but this likable in this case, undefined method comment URL for likes controller. So, uh, so we're gonna go into our likes controller and let's actually just say redirect to, uh, redirect back, redirect back, and we will say, um, uh, fallback, I think it's fallback, let's look this up. Redirect back rails. Um, it used to be redirect to back, but now it's redirect back fallback location um, is gonna be like posts URL or something. Um, just so that we have some sensible fallback URL. Okay, great, so now we are able to like this comment, we can unlike the comment. Um, again, we need to redirect back to uh, something that's not just exactly that. Okay. Um, okay. 
So we're going to go back to posts 11, refresh the page. So this has a like, we're going to like it again. Now it has two likes. We're going to like this top comment. Now it has one like, we can unlike it. Now it has zero likes. And now we can like each comment separately. Um, we can unlike the post. So now this is our, now our like functionality is working and it's applicable to both posts and to comments. So hopefully that was helpful. Cool. So that's uh, polymorphic associations. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate your time and attention. If, uh, if you liked this, <laughs> this, uh, whole episode about likes, give me a like, I'd really appreciate it. Hit that thumbs up and then, uh, yeah, we'll see you in the next one. Cheers.